Okay, so today's lesson is all about animal reproduction and we are going to focus on cattle. So first of all, we're going to start with the female reproductive system, just because it's a little bit shorter. So the cow, cow reproductive organs is what we're first going to look at. So in this case, in this slide, I'll show you guys two different pictures. In this case, this, the top one, shows the picture of the cow reproductive systems from the side. So this is from the side view, if you were to imagine that this is the um, hindquarters of the cow, the back side of the cow, and the head would be on this side. So this, this side is forward facing, this one is backward facing. And this picture right over here is the same thing we're looking at, but now from the top side. So in this case, the head of the cow would be on this side. This is the back area of the cow, and this is the hind quarters where the tail would be. Okay, so again, side view, top view. So in this case, guys, you don't have to be able to sketch the reproductive organs, but they will give you a picture of it, either this one, or they can give you this one over here, and then ask you to label the different areas. So you must know the labels, and in the next slide, we're going to talk about the functions of each of these areas. Okay, so let's start with where the egg cells gets produced, and that's going to be inside your ovary right over here, and there are two ovaries. Here's one. The other one is over here behind the uterus. Um, in this case, you can also see from the top part, here's the one ovary. On the other side of the structure is the other um, ovary. So there are two of them. Okay, so in the ovary, again, your egg cells get produced. Then I just want to mention the first part of your fallopian tube, also called the oviduct, right over here. It kind of looks like a hand holding the ovary. And they're not showing all the detail, but it's usually finger-like projections here, finger-like pieces holding the ovary in place. So this part is called the infundibulum, and this is the first part of your fallopian tube that actually catches the egg cell. So the egg cell would be released over here, go into the infundibulum, and then go to the oviduct. Eventually, it'll come into this part, known as the uterine horns. This is one horn. There at the back would be the other horn, because it looks actually like horns. From there, it enters the uterus. And from the inside the uterus, this is where your egg cell will stay and where fertilization, technically fertilization happens over here in the horn area. And if fertilization has happened and the zygote is forming, that little fetus, uh, well, first the zygote, then it becomes an embryo, then the fetus, but it will develop, the young baby will develop inside the uterus. So this is the area where it will stay. Okay, so then you have your cervix area. So this area, as you can see, is very narrow but it has thick walls to the side, on that side and this side. So from the cervix, we have the vagina right over here, and then the vulva or vulva is the outside area or the external reproductive organ of a, of a cow. So again, this is where the penis of a um, bull will be placed inside, and then the sperm will be released into the vagina into the cervix and eventually come to the uterus and then usually in the uterine horn or the oviduct, fertilization will happen. So egg cell meets sperm cell right over here somewhere. Okay, so again, just over here on this side, here we have the two ovaries. Here's the infundibulum, this thick area holding the ovaries. Your fallopian tube, uterine horn, part of the fallopian tube. You have your uterus right over here. Then you've got your cervix. And then it's your vagina right over here and the vulva at the behind. Okay, so here they show us actually also where the bladder is situated. And just as a side point, that is what this structure is right here. So again, we were looking from the top side down. And this is the bladder just sticking out here at the bottom. Okay, so then we have to look at the different functions of these sex organs. So first of all, we have the ovaries, like I just mentioned. Another name for egg cell is an ovum. So egg cell and estrogen production happens in the ovaries. So again, estrogen is your female hormone that gives you your female characteristics. It makes more well, the cow a cow. And secondly, your ovum usually is produced through the process of oogenesis. So oogenesis we are going to look at in the next slide, but that's basically the production of your egg cell. So then your ovum is usually also released into the fallopian tube through the process of ovulation. So ovulation also happens as the middle step of oogenesis. Then secondly, we have the fallopian tubes. We talked about them. They collect and transport your egg cell to the uterus. Then the uterus itself is the area where the fertilized ovum, or otherwise known as the zygote, is implanted and develops into the fetus. 
Then secondly, also for the uterus, it contains a blood-rich endometrium, in, endometrium lining. So your know, endometrium lining is basically very, very important because this sustains that pregnancy. So the endometrium lining is a thick tissue area inside the uterus that has a lot of blood, which means there's nutrients on the inside to, to feed the fetus that's developing. And also that's the area where waste products is, is taken from the fetus and then taken to the mother's body so that she can urinate and defecate it out of her, out of her system. So the endometrium lining helps then with getting rid of waste products and also brings nutrients basically to the young fetus. So then we have the cervix area, that narrowing area of, of body tissue. So it secretes mucus to help lubricate the sperm when the sperm does enter into the female's body. And secondly, it also forms a mucus plug or a barrier during pregnancy. So again, this is to protect the young fetus as it is developing on the inside so that any bacteria, viruses or even sperm, in case the bull does try and mate with a cow again, does not um, harm the young fetus. So any of those things cannot literally enter the uterus. The uterus then is plugged and blocked off from the from the outside of the body. And then lastly, your vagina it, re it receives the semen during mating and it also serves as a birth canal um, when the fetus is done developing and the young um, calf has to come out. Okay, so then we look at the ovarian cycle or eugenesis. Eugenesis happens during the ovarian cycle inside the ovary. So this entire big round structure we're looking at is literally the ovary. And you guys don't have to know all the different labels they give here. I will point out the ones that are important. So I just want to mention again, your ovary actually gets a lot of blood supply as well, so rather than the inside. And this entire process, the ovarian cycle, happens every single month. So step by step, this all happens roughly 28 days or 30 days, depending on the individual. So basically what happens here is we have, we start at the top, we end at the bottom. It's basically the cycle every month. So the first thing is that a follicle forms and right in the middle of the follicle is an egg cell. So it's the, it's the egg cell or the ovum that will eventually mature during this cycle and will be released into, into the fallopian tube. So as the follicle um, develops, it is known as an oocyte, right over here, it's still developing. And inside the follicle, the follicle is starting to mature, becoming bigger, bigger, and eventually big like this. And when it is very, very big and known as the mature follicle, it is called the graphene follicle. So yes, you guys must know this word. The graphene follicle is basically the mature follicle, and it has the egg cell that is almost ready to be released right on the inside. This part is usually nutrient areas. It looks like a large vacuole. Could have some nutrients and waste products. It holds on the inside. Okay, so then during the middle of the month, you have the process of ovulation. So what happens during ovulation? The egg, well, the follicle itself bursts open. This is the area where it bursts. And then the egg cell, the ovum, is released out of the follicle and into the fallopian tube, where it eventually will get to the uterus. So that is your process of ovulation, and you guys must know the, the definition of ovulation. So please think again, the O over here makes you think of an egg. So ovulation refers to something about eggs. It is the releasing of the egg cell okay, during the ovarian cycle. Okay, so after this egg cell has been released, the follicle... The scar, I want to call it, the scar of the follicle stays behind. And this follicle actually closes up again, as we can see over here. And this structure, or the scar area, that closes up is known as the corpus luteum. Here we have a better word. So there's Latin, corpus luteum. And the, the walls, as we can see here, of the corpus luteum actually thickens after a while. But it's still closed with absolutely nothing on the inside. So there's no egg cell on the inside but the scar stays behind. So the main um, function of your corpus luteum is to release progesterone. Think P for pregnancy, P progesterone. So progesterone is there to release, uh, or progesterone is there basically to um, keep your um, pregnancy going. So without progesterone, that hormone, um, you will not have pregnancy, meaning um, 
the egg cell of the, the fertilized um, egg cell will not be able to develop. So the young zygote won't be implanted in the uterus and the body will actually uh, reject the young baby or the young zygote if progesterone is not released. So progesterone is that hormone that enables pregnancy to keep on going and it, it enables the gestation period. So gestation means the development of the young embryo or the young fetus into a baby. So this pregnancy or this, this, the hormone progesterone is actually very, very important to allow this process to happen. So again, it will stay here actually. In the corpus luteum as long as pregnancy is going on and it's usually around okay they look um, longer than nine months cows generally so it will stay there for, for the remainder of pregnancy however long it is nine months i think it's around 10 months or something for cows so that's how long it's going to stay and progesterone is being released if in case in this essence in the ovarian cycle fertilization did not happen and you didn't, didn't have sperm cell meat egg cell fertilization happening then after a while, a couple of days, the corpus luteum will start to degenerate, meaning it will become smaller until it completely vanishes. And then the next month or in the next cycle, this entire thing will happen all over again. So you will have a new follicle forming with a new egg cell on the inside. So this thing happens month after month, month without any fertilization happening. But as soon as fertilization has happened and the young baby is starting to form, then this guy the corpus luteum will stay here for the remainder of the pregnancy. So the fact that this is here and progesterone is being released means that the ovarian cycle will stop and this will not go on. Okay, again, because it, the body doesn't want to waste any energy on producing another egg cell if pregnancy is already happening, because all the nutrients has to go to the young baby, no nutrients should go to making new egg cells. Okay, so Again, if you guys have any questions, please WhatsApp me. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys will get some homework after this.